Hey, this is Elisa Johnston with Average Advocate, empowering everyday people to make a difference in the world or in their community or in their homes. One thing that I've been talking about recently is about trauma and trauma in the church. I know a lot of you guys aren't necessarily followers of Jesus, but pretty much all of us, at least in the United States, are impacted by what is known as the church or um, Christian church of all different denominations and varieties. And so um, I've grown up that way. And I mean, as you guys all know, I'm, follow I'm a follower of Jesus. And um, I think it's interesting because a lot of times this issue is not talked about very much within church. Um, and also, I recently did a podcast on She's Got Gumption, which you can check out. Um, it's at Mrs. Wendy J. Olson is the tag and you can go to her um, you can go to her website and check it out and the podcast is there or you can go to just the most recent blog post on Average Advocate and the link is there also. So you can hear us as we talk about um, this conversation of things that we don't talk about in church a lot of times. Um, she has a lot of good other ones that are up there from the summer series but really the one that I want to talk to you about is trauma. So I'm not going to give away everything in the podcast because then you would have no reason to listen to it. However, one thing that I did talk about in the blog post that I put up about it were a few resources to help churches or people in churches, especially as they start to begin to talk about it and kind of overcome what that looks like. Because in reality, a lot of people within the church itself have been either hurt by church, experienced trauma in church, or on the other hand, um, have, have that in their background and they've come there for healing. And then if people within the church aren't really aware of how to work with that or how to recognize it or see it or know what to do about it, um, they, they don't get help. And lots of times they leave or they get frustrated. Um, and that is a really, really common experience that I see. Also, we don't necessarily have the greatest understanding of what we even mean by the word trauma. And so that's something that I've seen a lot and a lot of confusion about that. Part of that is that we have like this really grand view of what that means. And there's people who have experienced stuff that they're like, well, yeah, I obviously have trauma. I have PTSD. I was sexually abused or I was sex trafficked or sexually exploited um, or verbally abused, emotionally abused. There's a lot of different ways that people have experienced it. However, there's also the other side where there's a lot of little areas that people have um, hurt and stuff in their past that they haven't necessarily dealt with that keeps them from moving forward. So first off, I'll say that that is not really my expertise. I'm not a therapist. I'm not somebody who even really like that's not what brings me great joy is to help people through their own pain. However, I have a lot of experience doing that because um, this is such a huge social issue um, helping people work through these things. I've learned a lot over the years and done a lot of advocacy to help people through this. And also I do a lot of discipleship work within the church through ministry and women's ministry. And um, I do mentorship circles, discipleship groups. And so there are some tools that I found that I would recommend or to learn from. And that's what I'm talking about actually in this video. So I mentioned a few of them on the website on my blog. Um, again, these tools are almost all specifically Christian. There's a lot of other stuff out there that is non-Christian, but just to like clarify, um, that's what I'm showing you specifically because that's what I have with me and that's kind of from my belief system. So um, the first one is this, which is called The Courage to Heal Workbook. There's also another book that's actually called The Courage to Heal um, to me, that's just a huge, massive book that might be helpful, but I tend to go for the workbooks because the workbooks actually help people work through stuff. The reason why I recommend this one to pretty much any, that's specifically for people who have experienced sexual abuse as a child. But this also is super cool because at the beginning of it, it has a whole section to help you understand and get prepared um, to be able to begin working through stuff. And it gives you the ability to kind of a lot of questions to help you figure out what type of counselor or therapist is good for you. And so that's one of those things that can be a huge struggle to figure out, like, because there's a lot of bad counselors and a bad, a lot of bad therapists out there um, that aren't really helpful. And so this is one of the things I like about this book, because it really kind of helps you work through that at the beginning, um, whether you actually even, you know, you might have nothing to do with you know, sexual abuse or anything like that, but just even that section of it is really useful um, because you might have other things that you want to talk about or work through. Um, the next one 
is this right here. This is a super old book. This is like actually probably like the earliest version of it. It's called um, The Life Model or Living from the Heart that Jesus Gave You. Um, and this is kind of really a brief guide about um, how the church can be a place of wholeness. And it's talking about how to help um, people that are doing okay and how to recognize people that are not okay and kind of setting up a whole culture of safety um, and healing and how to do that as a full church. So they pretty much like, that's what this little tiny book is pretty much all about is like how you actually do that. So now they have, um, like a whole course that's called Conexus. Um, it ends with the letter X. I mean, I don't really know. <laughs> Maybe I should put that on the, I'll put that also on the um, website, um, on my website. But um, that is specifically to help churches like all around to figure out. I mean, it's not even like this is a special branch of the church that does this. It's like how to help the whole church become aware of it and know how to kind of work through stuff and work through stuff so people aren't stuck anymore in their past. So two things that I like about this that I, um, I go through in the mentorship circle is this thing called the maturities indicator. And you can also find it on, um, if you look up the Life Model Maturities Indicator, you can find probably a PDF of it online. But it kind of really helps you understand um, how people grow in maturity, and the more mature they are, the more safe they are to walk through, you know, healing with. The same thing, they have another thing that's called Love Bonds and Fear Bonds, which you could probably also search up to uh, in a PDF to find out just kind of like how what type of relationship is a healthy relationship versus a not healthy relationship and those are really helpful tools um, to begin working through things that hold people back and get them stuck. Um, this is also kind of like a newer version of stuff um, by the same type of people. Um, they I think now it's called Deeper Walk. They used to be called Life Model Works. I feel like their marketing is a little like convoluted because I'll go from one thing to another thing to another thing. But they have um, a lot of resources in this, and this is talking specifically to church leaders or leaders in general on how to be um, a healthy leader that helps people work through stuff and heal um, rather than, you know, not. Um, and then on the other hand, these are some other resources um, that people that I know that I've worked through have used um, or have used with them. And this one is called Ditch the Baggage, Change Your Life. Um, kind of dealing with past stuff, it's a workbook also. This one I've used myself called Breaking Free. This is a super old version of it by Beth Moore. So those are a few of the resources. Um, Celebrate Recovery is also, I mean, again, it depends on the group and the people that you're with, but Celebrate Recovery kind of helps people work through different types of addictive behaviors. Um, and that's kind of like a version of a, a using a 12 step program. Um, and that is usually found all over the country and throughout the world. Um, on site is another resource with, I think its name is Mike Alkoff. I don't know, but there's a link to that also on, um, this blog post that talks about that guy or, you know, those people as they help people do like healing to get unstuck from their past. Um, especially when it comes to trauma. So those are just a few of the resources that I want to throw your way because I know that um, it's one thing to just get upset about it and be like, oh yeah, or if we've had an experience that is upsetting and hurtful, um, you're always welcome to talk with me about it or DM me about it um, and I'll try to get you connected with the right resources um, for people who know how to do this a lot better than I do. Um, I, as a life coach, I, you know, help people work forward and move forward in their lives. But usually as I start doing that, you can kind of see where people get stuck. And when they get stuck, that's when you kind of usually need to go get help to, or just spend time dedicated to really working through the things that keep you stuck in the past. Um, and those are lots of times versions of trauma. Sometimes they seem small. Sometimes they're massive and all encompassing and, and, you know, make you, uh, you know, struggle with different types of, you know, mental health issues, but either which way, um, I really care about the church becoming a safe place. And since I'm part of the church, um, I want to do that and I want to help you guys and equip you. And since this is something that I encounter a lot, um, on average advocate with the people that I encounter there who are also care about justice issues and social issues, I wanted to throw those resources your way. Also, again,